Summer is fast approaching and I think it's time we took a little bit of stress out of our lives, isn't it? With HelloFresh UK, you can get all the ingredients and inspiration you need to make your meal times and your cooking experience simpler than ever. HelloFresh provides a number of recipes and meals to make your life as easy as possible and also caters to a wide range of different dietary requirements. Use my special discount to get 50% off your first order plus 35% off the next three and three free gifts as well. What more could you ask for? Check out the discount link or the checkout code down in the description below. Well, it's all started pretty nicely here at United with good performances and strong results to start off our tenure. But today we faced a small matter of Manchester City. Our rivals have won seven of the last eight titles. Our club hasn't won one for 23 years now and it might be about to sell a star player. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 111 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for the Manchester derby as we continue to get settled at United before an interesting Carabao Cup tie against Stoke and some big transfer news as the window draws towards a close. So if you're looking forward to all of that, as things have started pretty well on the pitch, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. There is some problems off the pitch which we might have to go into because John Murtau seems intent on selling our stars. Now, thankfully, we've got away with it so far because players have chosen not to go. But if the right club comes in for certain players, I feel we might be in trouble. The good news, a few players popping back from injury and on the pitch, we have been scintillating so far. You saw that 4-0 win against Wolves, which was a really strong second half performance. And after that, I can't be happier with how we're playing. We won 2-1 away at Fulham and with a better side throughout, Devalet and Demeter with goals early in each half. And Demeter got a brace against Southampton. They've almost gone onto the wrong screen there. And Henry Ocon got a late third. But the performances are great. We're getting young players into the team. We want to try and take advantage of not having European football. And we wanted to take advantage before we got to this horrible run of games when people were returning from injury. So we have now got to deal with a very tough run of Premier League fixtures. It's a horrid run, and really, Sheffield United at home is the only expected three points from this run. Don't forget this is a United side that has not been in the top six for 10 years, has only been finishing 14th last season, and hasn't won a title since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. There is a long way to go before we become a top club again. What won't help it, though, is if John Murtaugh starts selling stars. Now, Joel Finnegan was one he'd accepted an offer for last time. He rejected his planned outbound move, which was great. But look at the one in the middle of the screen here, because Jonah Hodgkinson was given an offer from Spurs, and it's not a world-class offer. 56 million up front with a potential to rise to 85, and to just sell him to a rival for a, a moderate fee, I'm not sure is a good move at this point. Thankfully, Hodgkinson has rejected the move, but before deadline day, if anyone else comes in, we could be in trouble. He's still wanted, and he's still wanted by Spurs. Will they come back in with a higher offer? I don't know. There's also been loan offers for a few of the youngsters that have been making first-team appearances, so Adam Hunter being one, and also Oscar Benegas at the back. But at the moment, they're all getting rejected. There's only £13 million on the transfer budget. There's plenty of wages, but I'm not sure we're going to get another sign-in. So at the moment, we work with what we've got. We have had the luxury for the first three league games of naming the exact same team every time. And now we've got one back from suspension, a couple back from injury. Is that going to change as we move along? Certainly going to change for the cup tie. So let's go and get straight into our first of today's two games. We're playing well, the dynamics are pushing on. I did find it interesting that our managerial support was below average, despite the fact we come into this job having won the Euros, which you would think is quite a big achievement. But perhaps it is because so many of these players are unhappy. We've got three or four that want to play in the Champions League and that we've made promises to for this season. Hodgkinson was one. I don't know why Hodgkinson and Finnegan both say they're disappointed not to join a club when they had offered accepted, but they've rejected the moves. On second thought, I'm not sure Finnegan's accepted offer was PSG. It might have been someone else. But for Hodgkinson, it certainly was the case. So a very odd start to the episode, but a few players unhappy and it does risk derailing our season. But let's be brutally honest, this is our first big test. It's whether we can keep the morale up enough in these run of tough games that then when we play against these bottom half sides as we have in the first three games, we
we can be consistent because if against nine or ten teams this year we can do the double we'll be right up there we'll have 60 points we'll be in the position to get Europe whether it's the Conference League or the Europa League we can start to build United back to where they should be of course Stoke is the chance at the start of a cup run but first we've got to deal with the Manchester derby the early kickoff on TV is on Christian Spassoff this summer Oh, don't I know him very well. He's continued to get better since we left Palace. And then up front, they've still got David Godwin, who might even be better than Haaland at this point. He is that good. So let's get the opposition instructions on. Let's get through to the team selection. We have got decisions to make. The three at the bottom, probably not fit yet. What we did have last time, though, is the return from suspension for Isaac Simmons, the left back. Now, he is a player who I probably will start in the long run. And whether it's ahead of Vanderson at right back, I'm not too sure. Can he play every game? He's also got a clause in his contract that he gets an extension if he plays 25 league games. So I kind of look at these and think, do I take him out, play Duffy on the right, Simmons on the left, and then play Vanderson in the cup where it won't affect his contract? So I think for the first time this season, I am going to make a change to the lineup. It will be Duffy at right back, it will be Simmons on the left. Vanderson makes do with a place on the bench. It does mean we've got five senior pros on the subs bench as well. That will hopefully improve as these two or three return from injury. We've got Robles in goal. Duffy switching to right back with Simmons on the left after suspension. Glishin and Develate, the two centre halves, probably will be Hoff and Hoff once he's fit. We've got Ocon and Hodgkinson in the midfield too. How long will the latter be here? Then De Buen on the right, Basau on the left, Guido behind Demeter. That front four has been terrific so far. The problem is only Demeter scoring the goals, and that might be an issue later on. The Devil A set piece situations work in a treat where we're playing short. I think the second goal he scored this season, it was a short free kick, then played in from the angle. Devil A found himself unmarked. So it is something that's working well. We've got two or three on the edge of the box each time. We've got loads of players going short for throw ins and things. We're being a bit inventive here. Something I don't often do in FM when I'm at these big clubs is have to be inventive with tactics. Let's go and get into the first half here because after all that positive talk, we face Jurgen Klopp's Manchester City and there is every chance that we can get picked off here. Spassoff and Godwin, we know are world class. Simone Prep, the number 10, he scored the winner against us in the Nations League final for Italy against England. And then going back, Tom Stansfield, Lewis Parsons, the two centre-halves, both started in my defence in that European Championship final. This is a team of the highest order. It is regenerated now. You've got Foden left on the bench. You've got Haaland just about involved in the squad. And nobody else from that original team. This is one that's moved to the next level. They've not been brilliant all season. A mix of victories and defeats there. But a big away following from Manchester United. A big opportunity at the Etihad. What can we do with it with five minutes gone? We're going to start positive. We'll be on the front foot as Guido doesn't take a short corner. I'm not quite sure why. It's straight at Elisayu. I do notice in FM, it's not like in the real world where you can bring three or four players short for a corner. You see it quite a lot in real life now where two players go for the short ball and try to make a three on two out by the corner flag. Whereas in FM, you can only actually physically send one player to come short. And that means that you're always going to get them marked and have a two on two. So it does make it a little bit trickier on that front as Preta sends a shot wide. We're finding a way around it. And so far this season, I can't have any complaints. Well, here comes a Manchester City corner, nearly 20 minutes on the clock, and they've probably had the better of the stats, but not been anything clear-cut for either side, as Scaroni gets in on the right, cuts inside with the ball. It's a big cross to Spassoff. We know him too well. His shot's blocked to Pret. It's headed away by Devele, and Guido flicks on. At the moment, bit of a backs-to-the-wall job as it comes down the left for Bales. The Buen chases, but can't do anything with it. And City get into the box. It's a brilliant run. Oh, that's unfortunate. The shot deflects, the keeper was already down for it, and it lands at Spasov's feet. Our former superstar at Palace has scored, of course, the opening goal against us. It was never going to be easy, was it? City are dominating the stats, and it's a signal of where these two teams are. City are miles clear of United. Last year's runaway champions v last year's relegation battlers, and that is the reality of the situation we're in, regardless of the size of this football club. As Prep finds Godwin out to Spasov again, we cannot compete with the movement. Back to the edge for Borelli, and it's off the post. We get away with one. This could be any score that City want it to, and they're coming again with La Madrid. We get the ball back, we clear it the halfway, and it's straight back at us again. Basel nicks it here, though. Can we finally break away? Gets over halfway, and he's challenged. Our best player, 
just sort of one that floats in the mix with them. We've had no shots, we've had no attacking threat, we've not really had any of the ball. City deservedly lead 1-0. In truth, probably could be more. And here we are again, just three minutes to the break, as Prep picks it up on the right side of the box, finds Godwin, the star striker back to the centre midfielder. The fact they've managed to find a striker as good as, if not better than Haaland, is remarkable. And he's in one-on-one -on -one here, rounds the goalkeeper. I mean, it's Memvi, boys, and I mean it with respect. And I know it's a horrible thing to say for a club of this size. They're not our rivals this season. To get back into the mix with United, just keeping it respectable is enough here. We are not trying to catch Manchester City in a one-season job. Two or three years down the line, it would be great. But at the moment, there is a big, big gulf between these two teams. And that has been proven by the 13 league places last season. City winning seven of the last eight leagues while United haven't been in the top six. That's what we've got to contend with here. And that's how we've got to show how good we are. Well, I've somehow managed to miss the third goal from Manchester City. I'm not quite sure why, but here they came down the right. Just too good for us. Too much movement, too much quality. It's 3 0. We're two minutes into the second half. And this is going to be a very long afternoon as Guido puts the corner in. Again, not playing short. City getting out quicker to stop that as De Buen plays it down the right. Beats his man. It's a great run. De Buen chips in. Guido's up. Can't do anything with it. And maybe this is where we're going to have to be a bit less naive and a bit less bullish tactically in these big games. Do we look at, for the long term, and I can do it in this game as well, perhaps going for a game like this and taking off, say, let's go for De Buen or Guido, doesn't matter which. We'll go Guido here. Humphreys to right back, and then maybe putting Duffy in as a holding midfielder because we haven't got the quality to play a 4-2-3-1 and be expansive in this. So if we have Duffy in like that, does it make a difference? We'll find out for the last 40 minutes. We're going to put Demeter on the right and we're going to put up front Joel North as a target man. We've done that in most games so far. And I just hope that it will stem the tide a little. Allow us to hold the ball up front. Allow us to push the wingers on a bit more. And maybe as we come towards the end of it, even create a chance or two for ourselves. We'll bring some of the youngsters on soon too. But for now, I just want to make sure that we don't go beyond like the four or five. We get a hammering in this game, it will be difficult. So we're 25 to go. Basel struggling on the left. Demeter's not been great on the right. I might just go for both of them changed, to be honest. Ocon's looking aggressive. Don't want anything silly with him. So let's go Jimenez in midfield. Taylor will play off the left for Basel. Could he play off the right even? It doesn't really matter. He'll go off the left for Basel. We'll go Hunter the youngster on the right. Vanderson can stay on the bench for this one. He's going to gain nothing from playing. Then we're going inside forward on attack for Taylor. This is not a winnable game now. and We just have to keep the score respectable. We're just over 10 minutes to go. City have bought on Foden. I'm guessing he's chasing an appearance record or something. If he hasn't already broken it. Hunter gets the ball back to Jimenez though. Can we get a consolation? Would have been nice for him to get his first for the club. But it's not to be. To be honest I'm quite pleased that we've kept battling. It's not been a complete mauling. I know they've been by far the better side. But... It's not like we've looked like losing six. It's not like we've given up a hundred chances. It has just been men against boys. And if we had our first centre half in instead of Clishing, if we maybe started with a tactic we finished with, perhaps a naivety on my front, then maybe we could have done more. So maybe that's something for the next couple of months in those big away games. Duffy in the holding role, go to that second tactic. But for now, a 3-0 defeat, it could have been worse. Let's go and make sure we beat Stoke and see if there's any more transfer news. Well, time for game number two, and this has been a real balancing act for the squad. We've had to keep a number of under-21 players in the senior team for this, prevent them from playing in the under-21 fixture. That's not quite worked out because one of them has then been sent out on loan today in the shape of Danny Ferreira. He's gone to Peterborough. We'll see how he gets on there. But if we look at the fitness test, we've also got a couple of senior players coming back. So I'm not going to be able to rotate the full 11, I don't think. I'm not sure United are strong enough to do that. So let's just see what we can put together. Of course, there is an international break after this weekend. We're not playing European football either, so we don't have to worry as much. And if we look at it, this might be our best chance to win a trophy. Stoke are currently a Premier League side, but they are bottom of the division. They have not started well, and I'd imagine they're going to have to rotate too. Well, I've had a little change of heart here, which means in addition to not changing the full 11, we've not actually changed much at all. I've bought in three players who I feel can make an impact on the squad and we've replaced people who are more likely to get injured. So Duffy's getting a little rest for Banderson. Jimenez is in for Ocon who has an above average injury risk and North is coming in up front. We'll move him to that target man role 
Demeter's out to the right and Dubwen drops out because again he's got a bit of an injury risk but most of the other attacking players ended up getting a rest at the weekend because we were a few goals down so not a huge amount to do there. There is a fourth change which is the goalkeeper for the domestic cup. Hovenhoff not quite fully fit yet and I don't see the need to risk it. So three changes out on pitch, one more with the goalkeeper. Let's go and get into it with a very young bench and see what we're able to do in this League Cup tie. Well, Joe Bursic is still going for Stoke City, who are managed by Stephen Kenny, the Republic of Ireland manager in real life. Alvaro Fernandez at fullback, and on the bench, any other familiar names? Not really. So it's quite a young side aside from those couple. Let's go and get into the first half. I want to see a marked improvement from the City game. We've still got Finnegan struggling a bit. I'd like to have a little chat with him if we can. Go on, go and make a difference. Earn your move. I might regret putting him in the team today. Let's go and get through the tunnel interview. Stick with our game plan for this one. It is the Carabao Cup. It is not packed at Old Trafford. And it's basically two average Premier League sides against each other. Albeit, I feel we're better than that. Let's go and get into the first half. Try and replicate what we did in the first three games of the season. And if we can get on the front foot a bit earlier here, get that early goal. And hopefully this could be a good night. And here we are with 10 minutes on the clock. We've got a throw on the right-hand side from Vanderson. It works its way into Klishin. He goes back to the keeper under pressure. The Stoke have changed into black with red shorts today. That's an interesting choice. As Demeter down the right to north again. We have adjusted their roles as he releases Guido. Back to Demeter. Was probably the wrong ball there. As Basal was arriving. But Jimenez is now. And we said about him getting his first goal as City. Well, he's deflected one in there. Demeter just as effective from the right-hand side. And Jimenez off the mark for the club. Manchester United off the mark in the Carabao Cup. Well, here we go again. Just 16 minutes gone and we're back on the attack on the left. And you can see the advanced centre-halves here. They've pushed themselves well up the pitch. And Vanderson gets it on the right. Has support. Looks for the early ball to base out. Well dealt with at the back post. Not sure why we needed to see that. But Bursic has got it. And I'm hopeful it's not going to be a deadly counter-attack. Long ball forward flicked on by Tipple. I think I've judged what it might be here. Barry down the right-hand side, takes on Simmons, good cross in, Devale heads away. Let's be honest, he's the only one who's going to, isn't he? Demeter loses out in a challenge and it's back to Souza. It's dealt with pretty comfortably in the end as Fernandez reaches Ubar, through ball to Tipple, Stoker in one-on-one, -on -one, and that is a brilliant block from Klishin. The goalkeeper went down really early, I thought it was destined to be a goal. But that is sensational from the Kazakhstani centre-half. He wants to leave the club, he's not started the season well and he had a stinker and the weekend at the Etihad, and he made a great block there, and to be fair, Finnegan has made amends that time, because that save from the header from that corner was brilliant, into the back post again, you would expect by tradition Stoke to maybe be better in that area than us, we're not the best in the air, we've only got the one six footer as we know, North makes it two today, but it's still not a great side physically, 30 minutes gone, I'm a bit worried about the stats, because Stoke have had a lot more of the game here, and we're not really getting a desired reaction from the boys. So hopefully we can push on as we head towards half time. Lots of the ball but not many chances. And Stoke again are on the front foot. They're playing direct and we don't have the players to deal with it. Especially given the centre half that's injured. As Klishin picks the ball up defensively for Devale. It would be a great time to nick a second here as Hodgkinson with a yellow card. Back to Devale and Demeter. And again if we could get two up we can maybe then rest a few for younger players later on. Start looking ahead to Bournemouth as Simmons at left back. Down the line to base out. Good run from him. Can he beat his fullback? No. Keeps turning back and that pass is awful. Klishin's caught in treacle there. Can't run. And thankfully the shot's wide. I'm a bit worried about base out. He's the star on paper. But he's really not delivering on the pitch at the moment. Let's get through the dressing room. I don't want to see complacency. We need a positive reaction because the end of that first half. Well not only was it not good enough. It was causing a few concerns. Well, we reached the hour mark and we are starting to get the shot count up now. We looked the better side early in the second half and we've got a highlight with it for Demeter. Guido gets the ball wide but goes back to Devale. Still looking for support but instead plays to Klishin. I'm not sure where the direct styles come from from us. It's not there at the minute. We seem to be passing it short a lot more even though we're trying to be more direct. As Hodgkinson wide, again base out, got caught just ball watching. Not going towards it, not attacking it. Just waiting for something to happen. We look a bit desperate at the back as well. We're letting the ball bounce roll over the shop. And Simmons is struggling with fitness now. As Demeter gets away down the right. Would be a great time for a second, but it's not coming. Hodgkinson's in. Do not foul him. Basal's in. He almost does. Big long ball forward. It is not a comfortable game, this. Guido down for Hodgkinson and Jimenez. Through ball's poor. 
The passing range is awful, but we win it back with Demeter. 1-2 with North, and in it goes. That's what you want to target man for. He's not been great in front of goal today, but a lovely 1-2, strong with his back to goal. And despite all of those concerns there, we might now be coming back into this. We're 2-0 up. I'm going to rest a few because you can see there's tired legs in here. Simmons is going to be replaced by Duffy. Just do that rotation at left back. I'm also going to take off Hodgkinson for Ocon. So in two areas, we're sticking to what we know. We're staying as strong as we can. Basel's not had a good game again. I don't know whether to stick with him and play him into form. I don't think I'm going to on this occasion. Joe Taylor will come on left wing. He'll go as an inside forward on attack. And then what else do we do? We'll leave on the ones who aren't first teamers because that isn't going to affect the weekend. We'll leave it at three for now. We'll give it five or ten more minutes. And if we're still two up, then we can make a few more changes, which at the moment, touch wood, it looks like we are. Develay is struggling at centre half. Benegash, you'll get a run out there. And maybe Clishin as well, in fact. We've got Humphreys available and he'll come on. He's not the tallest, but he'll do a job. We'll go Benegas alongside Humphreys and that's how we'll leave it for the last 20. 2-0 up against Stoke. Fingers crossed it's game one. It's not been convincing. It's not been dominant. But after the City game and with a bit of rotation, it is important to pick up the result, which I think we're going to do. Into four minutes of stoppage time. It's been a very strong finish and we've got a corner in a stoppage time there. And it's a brilliant finish from Joel North. What a goal that is, by the way. And the difference it makes having another six footer in the box. You've got Guido short for the corner, three of them on the edge of the area. And it just means that those two in the box have got so few players marking them. It then becomes about movement rather than height and ability in the air. As it is, North does the job. He gets his goal to go with the assist. It's a good 3-0 win. It wasn't a great first half, but we've done the job. We're through in the Carabao Cup. Let's see who we get next time. See when we're going to be back. We'll see if there's any more transfer news before we get to the next fixture. Well, it's time for the Carabao Cup third round draw. The stage at which United would normally expect to come in. Brighton won it last year despite getting relegated from the Premier League. And all of the big boys are now in. So let's just draw all the teams and see who we get. We are going to be facing Championship Portsmouth at home. That is exactly what we wanted. What we also want is what we're seeing some of the other ties. Because Leeds are playing Chelsea all Premier League. Two of the big six, Palace and City, playing each other. Two of the big six, Bournemouth and Arsenal, playing each other. Big sides are going out and we're getting decent home ties. You might say it's the old Manchester United way. But I'm not going to complain at the minute because we need all the help we can get to take this team back to the top. Let's get ahead to Saturday, see if there's any more transfer news. At the moment, looks like the end of the window is going to be quiet. Well, we made it to Saturday and just 48 hours before the end of the transfer window and there is no suggestion of any more ins. There has been one accepted offer on the outs though after a sea of loan offers. One for Oscar Benegas has been accepted. He'll benefit from a season there, there's no doubt about it. But a shame we couldn't keep him at the club. Interestingly, we keep getting really low offers for one of our star young players, which is Joseph Taylor. You've seen him make an impact at times this season already. And he is a good player and he's got potential. But for some reason, the offers coming in are only five or six million, as is his value. He's got three years on his contract. He's on a decent wage. I don't really understand it, but there we go. Let's have a look at the schedule for when we're going to be back. And I think you know what game it's going to be. We're playing our former club in the middle of October. We're also going away to Newcastle, who have become pretty good in this save. And those two away trips after the international break in October will give us a chance to learn our lessons from the City game. Do you think we will, though? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, a 3-0 defeat followed by a 3-0 win, then please do put a thumbs up on it. And if you want to stay up to date with the season, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Of course, we could yet have a disaster if another offer is accepted for Hodgkinson or something like that. But at the moment, it does look like it's going to be a quiet end to the transfer window. If you're missing your eventful transfer deadline days, though, do not worry because yesterday's Build a Nation episode will have you covered. We had the full range of emotions and pretty much the full range of dramatics going on in that one. You can find it up in the eye above with the Twitch channel and the football podcast, too. And we're going to be back here in a couple of days time for a big game against our former club and the last side we led in club management. I hope you're looking forward to that and will join me for it because the run of fixtures from this point on is going to be a real test of our ability.